We will begin. There may be a few people coming in, um, you know, but um, they can come in and just join us as they will. Um, we have about an hour today, so um, there's a lot of things that um, that I was that I'm going to go over. Um, if you have any specific questions, information um, that you'd like to know. Um, and um, I'm not getting to it, or if you have questions about things that I am going over, um, let me know. Um, just raise your hand, um, interrupt me. Um, that's sort of what we do. We answer questions here, uh, give out information. So I want to make sure that, um, that you all leave with um, all the information that you need to go out and um, get your grad program started and uh, kind of get going on a really good foot. So. Um, so today, um, well, the first thing I want to say is welcome. I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Um, and I want to say congratulations, especially if you're a first year just starting out. Um, grad school is a big deal. And, um, and it's really a, a fun experience as well. So we want to make sure that um, what we do is work together with you as a partner and uh, make sure that grad school experience is the best that you can possibly get. Um, and make sure that we're, um, you know, we're offering you the services, the resources, everything that you need to be successful in your career here and then um, for your career after you graduate as well. Um, so three main things that I really, um, that we sort of said we'd go over in the description of the workshop um, and also three main things that I, I want you to know. Um, you have spaces to concentrate on, on whatever you need to do here. You have people to help you um, do what you need to do um, and the resources to really push your research and your projects to that next level. Um, and, and I'm really, like I said, I'm covering all that today, but um, definitely ask if you have any questions um, and, and I'll leave some time at the end for questions as well. So first of all, um, with spaces, um, I should ask, how many of you uh, were at the um, grad student welcome? Any of you? The, that was the big party they held a couple of weeks ago before school started. Probably, okay, good. So then I can repeat myself. So this is good. <laughs> because I told them then about the graduate student carols. Um, and those are upstairs, um, and those, that's probably one of the biggest perks that you have as a grad student. Um, and that is a very, um, that is a, a, a space for you to sign up for, um, and, uh, and it is, it's assigned to you. Um, it's, it's a space that's, you know, has the Carol kind of like walls here, um, and it has a, a filing cabinet and a lockable drawer. Um, for you to use. It's shared with one other person um, and it's up to you to kind of work with that person um, to establish a schedule uh, for your, you know, uh, for your time there. But, um, but you're issued a key um, and, and that's your space. So you can go up there um, and work uh, for as long as, as we're open um, and, uh, you know, store your things in there. Uh, we do ask that you don't, uh, don't bring food or store food up there, but, um, but other than that, uh, you can definitely put some items in there. You need to renew these every semester, um, and please try not to lose the key. That's expensive for both you and us, uh, but, um, but um, you know, you're welcome to use those anytime you have a, um, a project um, that you need to really complete. Um, uh, one thing that I did notice is that um, TAs who have an office on campus, um, they are put lower on the list. So if you already have an office, then maybe keep the grad carols for folks who don't have an office. So that's it. <laughs> Do you have an office? Oh, okay. Um, the other, the other thing um, that is a great space for you, um, we do have study rooms here, and I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, we have single study rooms, and we have uh, group study rooms. So you can reserve these online or at a service desk. Um, they are, um, uh, this is great for the time when you need a door, um, you know, and, and you want to just go in somewhere, close the door, and have that focus. Um, they're, they're quite quiet. They also have a whiteboard 
um, in, in the rooms as well. You can use those for up to three hours, but if nobody else wants it, you can renew it. Uh, let me show you. I know this is, this is always, when it goes back behind me, I know it's pretty, uh, you know, it's distracting, but let's, let's start using the website here so I could kind of show you around a little bit. Um, to book a study room, it's pretty easy. Um, all you do is just reserve online here, um, and it's going to ask you to select the time and the day that you'd like to reserve um, and put your uh, name and your email in. Um, you, um, but you don't have to do that. You can just come here and ask if we have a study room available. Um, I will say that undergrads tend to book them out solid, um, especially the closer it gets to midterm and, um, and finals. So pretty much those are, uh, those are unavailable unless you've booked it well in advance over those kind of three weeks or so. Um, other spaces, um, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to go to our cafe. Um, so obviously we, um, food is just fine here. Um, so feel free to bring your own food in, but we also have the cafe here um, in the library. It is not open the same hours that the library is open. So for instance, on Saturday, it's, it's not open on Saturday. So, um, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, though I have seen people do things like um, call for Jimmy John's and uh, <laughs> call for delivery. And, and if you want to do that, you totally can. Um, uh, one other space that I really like to highlight is our theater room. Um, and um, you can, as, as a student, uh, students, faculty, and staff all can uh, book that space out as well. Um, it's actually just, just up the way a little bit on this floor. Um, it is uh, it's kind of right over there behind that wall. Um, and this is a place that is available to watch um, films completely darkened, really nice, comfortable seating, um, and you can watch films um, that streaming or that are in our collection. Um, so um, so that's, a, that's a nice space that a lot of people don't know about. Um, and uh, you can even use it, um, I've seen people use it for uh, video gaming. Uh, so, and, and just for watching TV, you know, you're working, you wanna go and take some time off, watch some TV, um, but uh, academic things do take precedence, so. Um, Does that cost, or is that in part of the? Yeah, all, all of this is um, totally free to you. So um, yeah, there are very few things that we have here that actually cost you anything. So, and I'll make sure to highlight those um, because um, that's what we do with your, uh, there's a library fee that we, um, that we have for each credit hour um, and we get um, that library fee, part of it goes to technology, the large portion of it goes to our um, resources, but, um, um, you know, but this is, what we, this is what we use that money for, so it's really great. Um, but yeah, definitely that theater room. You can also book uh, the theater room online as well. So let me show you. If you hit that reserve online, you see that right now we're reserving a study room. And these are all the study rooms. If you hit that info button, it'll tell you, you know, what, what's, which space it is. But we can also um, book, oh, it looks like the theater room isn't up here. Yep, the theater room isn't up here, but the creative production lab is up here as well. These are things that you can book. Um, I'm gonna speak a little more about the creative production lab in a bit, but these are spaces and uh, things that you can book to do um, as a creative project as well. Um, the whisper room, which is a, um, uh, recording studio and uh, the green screen, uh, which is that camera right there and a green screen um, behind you. Um, and so you can book those as well. The theater room, it looks like you're going to have to go up to uh, a service desk and ask to reserve it. So, um. so then, um, so that is our spaces. Um, a little, uh, one last thing about sort of our, our spaces in general. Um, the third floor is um, known as the quiet floor. And our undergraduates are, are pretty 
serious about that. <laughs> I've heard them come in and talk about that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I do go up and, and sort of talk to people in a regular voice, and, and I get kind of kind of looked at a little bit, you know. So, um, so kind of keep that in mind when you're up there. Otherwise, um, it is group, uh, group work. Um, this is your library, so use it as you will. Um, so the second main thing that I really want to um, kind of share with you is um, that we do, have, we do have people to help you. Um, one thing I didn't do at the very beginning of all of this is introduce myself. <laughs> Who am I, right? I'm one of those people that can help you. Um, my name is Tammy Owens, and, um, and I am uh, a librarian here, and I am a specialist in the fine arts. And, um, and, I, and I do things like this as well. I do instruction and outreach for the library. Um, we have subject specialists in every, every area, um, in every um, department and every topic. So, um, and that is on the back of, I mean, we can, we'll, we'll always be telling you about your subject specialists and your librarian. Um, we have a new librarian um, who is starting in, um, he is beginning November, uh, and he is the social sciences librarian. So um, before November, if you need help in any of those areas, uh, feel free to stop by or to um, email me or really anyone else, um, and we can get you the help that you need. So my email is actually on here. But I will tell you um, another way to contact. You can directly email us, which, and our email is on this, this page. Um, but we can, you can also make an appointment with people. Um, and let me get back to the website to show you. This, this big Ask a Librarian button is a really great way to, um, to just sort of ask a question in general, um, or contact uh, one of us. So you can see that there are a lot of options here. Um, you can just send your question in, and um, this will get forwarded to one of us if it's a specific, you know, subject-specific research question. Um, you can um, chat with us. This goes to our service desks. So if you're just wondering, hey, what's the hours today, or um, you know, any, any kind of easy question, uh, that'll go directly to our service desks. Um, and then uh, you can always text us. And uh, then there is the link to make an appointment with a research librarian. And the great thing that this does is um, it puts this appointment directly on our calendar. So um, it books out time for you. Um, you can decide if you want 30 minutes of help, if it's just sort of a beginning kind of chat about your topic or about your project um, or about your research in general. Um, you know, maybe 30 minutes will work. Um, we also have an option of, and this is usually what we tell um, graduate students, to book out an hour. Um, especially if we're talking about one of your papers or, you know, sort of starting to outline your research trajectory, um, that sort of thing. We typically go over our 30-minute appointments anyway. So, um, or if you need in-depth help with exactly how to use a database, things like that, um, we uh, will we'll sit and have about an hour-long um, appointment. So it's pretty easy. All you have to do is select that hour, select a person. We can use mine. Um, and then select the day and the time that you would like to, to schedule. When you do it, um, it'll tell you where we're located. Some of us have um, hours around campus. So I'm at uh, Multicultural Affairs over in the Milo Bale Student Center uh, twice a week for an hour. Um, and you are welcome to um, book me there, um, and I'm happy to, to meet you there as well. Um, so just kind of keep in mind where we are going to be, um, and then just fill out the form um, 
different libraries have different questions that we'd like answered. Typically, it's basically just what do you want to talk about? Um, and for some of us, uh, for me, I like people to say, this is what I've done already. You know, this is kind of where I'm at with this topic or with this idea. Um, and so this is kind of, you know, my, my knowledge point there. So um, we have one librarian, our STEM and business librarian is also on um, Scott campus. She has an office down in Mammal Hall. So know that um, if you need STEM or business help that she is there. And um, one thing that I want to tell you is, you know, you can really, I know I said this before, but you can really come in at any stage of your research. Uh, if you're just thinking about ideas, if you're um, kind of investigating a few different paths, um, or if you're doing, you know, a 20 or 30 page research paper or a 10 page research paper for one of your classes, that's great. Um, come in and talk to us. Um, you know, and then we also do a, a lot of work with people who are in their um, literature review stage and things like that. So, um, so we'll definitely help you whenever you need help. And one thing that I like to tell everybody is that a half an hour of work with us, uh, of just sitting down and talking about things or showing you a few tips and tricks, um, half an hour is going to save you a lot of time. So keep that in mind. So whenever you're at that kind of, I'm frustrated and I don't know what to do, or I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do, come and talk to us. Absolutely, 100%. I can tell you that um, the first time I went to grad school, um, I've been to grad school twice, so um, first time I went to grad school, I didn't meet with a librarian the entire time. I wrote my, I wrote my whole thesis without meeting with a librarian, and I, I didn't really have a good sense of, of you know, really what, what I was doing or, or how I was um, focusing, and I was trying to do it all myself. So I was doing it the hard way um, and, and had a lot of kind of emotional baggage that was coming up because of that, right? Um, and I, I really did just discover how much, how much easier it should be because as grad students, and you can share this with your colleagues as well, grad students, really, I mean, we all think like, oh, I should know this, I'm a grad student, like this, this you know, this shouldn't, sh this isn't hard. Um, but, but know that, you know, just like the classes that you've been through in undergrad, um, this, this level of scholarship is something that you're learning. And we can help you through that kind of, through those kind of steps of learning. So, so yeah, it's really, it's really important to remember that. So do you guys have any questions about uh, meeting with a librarian or um, your personal librarian or anything like that? Yeah. So on the back, it talks about the different types of librarians. Yeah. So just as an example, mine would be Katie Bishop since I'm a communication. Yep. Okay. And then you have to make an appointment with that librarian under that. You don't necessarily have to. Um, since we've met, you can totally come in and talk to me. That's fine. Um, I, uh, we do recommend starting that relationship with your subject specialist, though. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you really click with somebody in particular. Um, and that's great. You know, it's just sort of um, a lot of times we, we do like to have that relationship where somebody can, you know, you could just email, hey, I'm having this trouble. Can you help me out with this? Oh, you know whatever the case may be. Um, so sometimes you just click with somebody else and that's, that's great. The reason why we say talk to your subject specialist is because we're really immersed in those specific databases um, and that spe those specific topics that are, um, that are sp specific to your, uh, to your field. Um, so we have, and I'll show you this um, in just a few minutes here, uh, we have over 200 databases in lots of different areas. Um, and I get to know the databases that I use, they're like my friends, right? I, we know them really, really well. Um, but I just helped somebody today, for instance, who, um, who was in computer science. And I'm a fine arts librarian, and so I had to tell them, um, hey, uh, I can help you because I know databases in general and I've seen a couple of these, but I can't help you as much as our STEM librarian could because she knows this 
backwards and forwards. So, um, so yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of us are also generalists as well, um, and we can definitely start you on uh, like the concept of of organizing information. That's kind of what we do. So, um, so that's and and really, any of us are happy. Like we're complete nerds about this. So, um, so that's. Uh, yeah, that's something. And the other thing is that um, kind of to take that idea a little bit further is that um, you can always, if you have a spare moment, typically we work nine to five or, well, someone gets here. We have one librarian who gets here at seven o'clock in the morning. So, um, and, and many of us, you know, there, there's at least one of us who, you know, we stay until about 5.30. So, um, you know, you could come up at any time if you're here during the day and just say, hey, I got to speak with a librarian and they can figure out who's here um, and, and just call, us, call one of us up. So, so that's absolutely something that you can do. And it's just Monday through Friday, nine to five usually? Usually, yeah, usually. Um, but if you um, or anyone needs uh, an appointment after hours, um, on the weekends, um, just email, e like I say, email your librarian. Um, they'll try and um, figure something out too. So, um, and we also do, we do a lot of consultation over email too. So um, you can definitely say like, I have this problem and I won't be able to come in, but um, can you help me out? Which databases should I use? What keywords should I use? Where should I go? You know, this is, this is my issue. How do I, how do I start? Or how do I, you know, um, you know, how do I, how, how should I be, what should I do to become successful here, you know, so. Um, and I think uh, another thing to remember is that um, we're, we're really trained in, in asking questions. Um, so if you, if you don't even know where to start, um, we're, we're there to say, you know, to ask you those pointed questions to, to kind of get to the place where we can start looking for information. So that's the thing. Um, so, the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is um, the resources that we have, because I'm sure that's why you're here as well, just to see sort of what do we have, you know, how does it compare maybe to my undergrad if you weren't here for undergrad, um, and uh, how can I get my hands on all of this great stuff. Um, these 200 plus databases, books, and things like that. Um, do you have a question? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> That's fine. Just wanted to make sure. Um, so, um, so you know, we we do have hundreds and thousands of books for you um, today. I want to start a little bit uh, talking about um, our get started guides, our library guides for each discipline. Um, and show you where um, where you can really get to your databases as well. Um, so, um, just very quickly about our books and about our catalog. Um, before I get to that, our uh, library catalog, our search function is just right here on our main screen. This is our search function to our to our catalog right there. Um, it is uh, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, but I will say it says books and more. Uh, I typically use our catalog just to look for books or physical items. Um, you can look for um, articles in there, but it's a single search function for multiple, multiple databases, um, and uh, it gets a little messy. So since you guys are at a higher level of um, research, you probably would like to um, focus in on your specialization and focus in on your specialty databases. That's what I always recommend. Um, and so use this as a book search. Um, and that will, uh, you can search for books both here and for books all the, everywhere around the world. Um, and we can get those books for you uh, from another library. It's very, very simple. So um, would you like me to show you around how to, how to find a book? Yes? Okay. Easy. Okay, somebody has to tell me their specialization though. What, what should I do a, a search for? I'm doing, I'm hoping to find an article about Tim Toomey's identity 
Ooh, ooh, wait, what, who, what? Tintumi, it's T-I-N-G space T-O-O-M-E-Y. Okay, all right, we're just going to search for that, and this is in our books, um, in our catalog, so we'll see what we have here um, about that, um, about that topic. All right. So we have um, Ting Tumi as, a, as an author, right? Um, and so I'm assuming that this person is also, is this, is this the same, the, the, the it's author? author yeah. Um, in one of the communication topics that we're talking about this week of identity. So that's the first thing. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. So we can say Ting Tumi and then we can put um, identity. after that and see what we have. So, we have, all right, we would have to probably do some, like if you wanted um, a book by Ting Tumi and about identity, I'd have to do a few other searches and say the author is this person and it's about identity. Um, but we can actually, what I'd like to do is go back and look at one of these, you know, managing intercultural conflict effectively. Uh, this you could see is, um, is an online book. Um, we do have um, hundreds and thousands of books online. Um, and so you can always access those online. Um, you do need to access both the databases and um, books. You do need to create a library account. And before we leave today, we'll make sure that um, there's only three of you so can actually create your library accounts before we go. Um, that would be something that we should do. Um, so you can um, access these off campus, um, check these out uh, for, it depends on the uh, provider, sometimes a day, sometimes 30 days, uh, but online books will just kind of be checked out to you. You do have to download a viewer for many of them, uh, but then when it's due, it will just kind of take it back. So um, kind of keep aware um, of that. And then a couple of things about our um, catalog. This is just um, where, the, where in the library it is. Um, most of our circulating collection is upstairs on the third floor. Um, and these, this is uh, the call number. The H's, try to figure out where they would be, uh, somewhere over there on the third floor. Um, it, it, um, our collection is organized. Uh, the A's are in that corner. And then it kind of goes in a horseshoe shape and then the Z's are over in this corner. So if you have, uh, you know, your, uh, you know, if you've done research and you know your call number range, um, then you kind of know where you're gonna be hanging out in the library. If you want um, help getting a book off the shelf, um, if you've not worked with um, the Library of Congress call numbers uh, for a while or, um, or uh, at all, then um, we can definitely help you with that. Like I said, I mean, even if it's a question about, I forgot how to get a book off the shelf, I, I forgot how to, how to look up a call number, like, don't be afraid to ask us, right? We, we want to answer your questions and we don't judge. <laughs> we, don't, we just don't judge, that's it. Um, so, um, I'd also like to, so that is our catalog. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, if you um, want to just see books, there's, there is a way to just see books. Um, and this, um, you know, you see you have 1,100, um, about 1,100 articles, right? At, that's why I say, like, go into the communication database. That's probably where you're going to find your articles because going through 1,100 here is just, it's not, it's not quite as easy to pare it down as it is in the databases, but you have 27 books, you know? And you can go through these pretty easily um, and see if any of those are, are what you're looking for. Um, one thing I love to do is to find a really great book 
go upstairs, just sort of start looking around, you know, browsing the shelves. Um, because remember in Library of Congress, all the topics um, are shelved in generally the same, the same place. So um, for me, all of my art books are up here in the ends and it's my topic. So I know that the Renaissance painting is going to be all kind of on the same shelf. So you guys will find your space and kind of get to know it pretty well. Um, and you get 12 weeks of having those books with you with two renewals. So you could check out a book, renew it twice and have it the whole semester. So that's really nice. Um, so let's um, talk a little bit about our databases. Um, there are, um, actually I want to, before I do that, I want to talk about our, um, these, these get started guides that I talked about a little bit. Um, these will tell you a lot of stuff. Uh, stuff. These will tell you a lot of things. Um, they will not only give you the best databases, they'll give you um, the name of your librarian and a way to contact them, um, and just many, many things about your particular topic or your area. And kind of the easiest way, there are two ways to get there. One way is to go, this will also remind, remind you of who your subject librarian is. You can click on that and go to, for instance, uh, communications, right? Communication, sorry, without the S. Um, so you have a research guide here. So all you do is just click on that, um, and this gives you Katie's smiling face so you know what she looks like. Um, gives you a direct uh, link to her appointments. Um, also gives you this best bets. This is your kind of entryway into the top databases in your field. Um, and then also, so for instance, for communication, we have, um, she knows that one thing that you may want to do is quant and qual research, right? Um, so uh, she has very specific kinds of things about that. One thing I want to show you So that's one way into these guides. The other way is to just write down our URL to this, which is libguides or library guides, libguides.uinomaha.edu. And I think, I don't know if this is on here. Uh, I need to add it to here. This is, <laughs> I can't believe it's not on here, but, um, but that's, that's kind of how I kind of go about this. It's, libguides.uinomaha.edu. I do want to show you. Um, so for instance, um, you know, if we go to bioinformatics, uh, this is our STEM librarian. She definitely has a lot of um, source material for that. Um, all of her, you know, very specific guides are very, very detailed uh, because people in those fields really need very specific information. So, um, so that's one way into our databases. Another way, which I think you'll find really cool, is to look at all of them and to figure out which ones you want to use. So if you click on the databases and um, databases A to Z, that will give you everything we've got. 200, oh, just last semester it was 214, now it's 225. <laughs> so <laughs> we're getting more and more. Um, we usually have some things on trial or brand new, um, so definitely look at that. Um, and then you can also choose from here communication as my subject. And again, there's Katie. There's another way to get a hold of her. So <laughs> Can you tell which message we want you to get, <laughs> right? Um, so um, it has links to all of our guides and it also, again, has our best bets there. Um, so communication source, it's, uh, you know, it's one of, one of the databases, um, you know, um, one of the best, best known databases for communication. So, um, so yeah, so um, 
we will go over the library accounts. Um, so that's how you get to these um, databases from off campus. We'll, we'll, um, we'll go over that in a bit as well. Um, we um, also do, as I said before, we do interlibrary loan. Um, and interlibrary loan is, as it, as it seems, um, it is, uh, we can get documents, um, so articles, um, physical items, books, and things like that from another library for you. Um, typically, this is for free. Um, if there is a charge, we will let you know um, before we even order it. Um, and um, so um, that is the second account that you need is an interlibrary loan account. Um, and if we don't get to that today as far as um, showing you how to, to do that interlibrary loan account, um, I will go back to this. Under library services, um, you can see all of our services, all of the things that we offer, which, you know, I'm not going to go over printing or scanning or faxing or copying, but yeah, we have all of that here. Um, but we, um, the most important thing for you is this interlibrary loan and document delivery. Um, super important because um, we have a lot here, but we don't have everything. Um, and so, it's, uh, it's very important for you to get familiar and comfortable with, with just ordering as much as you want to and as often as you can. Don't be afraid of, you know, when you're doing that research of just, if we don't have it, hit that interlibrary loan button, you know, over and over again. So, um, and I'll do a quick search here. We have a few minutes, so I'm going to show you what, what I mean by that, uh, and ordering something on interlibrary loan. Okay, Ting Tumi, right? And what was that? Identity. Identity. And sometimes it's a case of, um, again, um, if you're in databases, to think laterally. Uh, maybe it's not identity, maybe it's a different word, um, maybe. Um, you know, we have to add something to that search. So, um, so here are um, many of her articles about identity um, and things like that. So, um, and actually, this isn't bad. Um, there's not that many. It's 21. Usually, I like to see a couple hundred, but uh, but it's Ting Tumi's articles on this, right? So. Uh, but uh, there we go, Stella, okay. I was making sure that it wasn't Adrian to me because sometimes that happens, you know, it's just, it's not at all what we're looking for. So um, we often have the full text, um, but I wanna see if we have, sorry, if you're getting sick. Um, What I'm looking for is um, something that we actually don't have in our databases, um, and so we can, uh, I can show you a little bit what that looks like, and I bet, okay, this looks, this is new for me because it doesn't normally say get item from UNO library, but that's what you're looking for is this button called get item. Uh, I'm going to click on this and see what happens, um, I have a feeling should open this. Yep. And so this opens, anytime you see that get item in a database, you click on that, it looks in all the other databases that we own, all other 224 of them, to figure out if we've got that particular item in a different place. In this case, we do. And you just click on um, view full text, and um, that will bring you, it should bring you right to that article. And we'll let that think about what it's done for a while. There we go. And sometimes things like this happen, um, that it doesn't go exactly to where, you know, like for me, I would have expected um, doing this a, a lot. Um, I would have expected to, the article to just sort of appear on the page and to bring you right there. So this is when um, I urge people to be persistent, uh, to be patient, um, and, and to investigate a little bit. Um, if something like this happens to you and you're looking for a very specific 
article and you're like, well, I clicked on both of those full, full text links and it didn't take me anywhere. That means that there's probably a problem on our end and that would, that would be a great time to just click on that Ask a Librarian and say, hey, I'm looking for this article. It's not bringing me to the right place. So, um, so that's, uh, that's something to remember. Um, So the other thing that is really, really great um, is that our interlibrary loan um, also, our department also does what they call document delivery. Um, and that just means that if there's a book chapter here that you want, um, if there's an article you find um, and it says, oh, we have it in print at UNO Libraries. Um, and those, by the way, if it's in print, it's going to be downstairs. Um, you can always come and look at those and scan those. Um, but our document delivery team will actually scan them uh, you know, for you and upload them to your interlibrary loan account as well. It's just the same way as, um, as requesting an interlibrary loan um, document. So, and that is, that is also pretty easy. So for instance, to, do, to, to order either um, interlibrary loan or um, document delivery, um, you would just um, say that view full text wasn't there and it just said we can't find a copy of this anywhere in your library. You would just request this item through interlibrary loan and just pop up a new window and ask you to log in and then um, it'll have a form that's already filled out. You just press OK and it, and it gets requested. So, and then you'll get an email saying when it's ready for you. So, and it's I tell people do it once or twice and it'll just get super easy. The first time you do it, it's like, what, what am I doing? But um, the, the next couple of times you do it, it's, it's just gonna be so easy. Uh, so then um, the other resources you have um, here in the library, we have a fantastic um, archives and special collections. Um, it is really fantastic for local, um, regional collections. Um, it houses university archives, so anything that's happened here in the university, um, we're, you know, check with them, definitely. Um, and um, they have um, something very unique in the region. They have the Queer Omaha archives, so this is something that they have started um, very, very recently um, that is just such a, an amazing um, gives us an amazing sense of our community here. Um, and so that's something that if you're doing something that you need um, uh, um, primary source material, go down and check with them. They are located um, on the first floor. Um, kind of, they're actually kind of almost underneath us. <laughs> that's why I'm pointing at the floor. Um, so um, they are really fantastic. And, and their hours um, are, I think they're eight to five, um, Monday through Friday. Um, so um, yeah, just work directly with them. We also have a creative production lab, which you may have seen uh, when you walked in. Um, it is on this floor um, and it's kind of, um, it's directly across the way. I'm pointing at it if you could see through the walls. Um, and uh, the creative production lab, we, I mentioned the um, recording studio and the, um, the green screen. Uh, but they also have um, a nice little flock of 3D printers, um, and they also have a, um, they have a, um, what am I thinking, what is that called? Um, I wish Drew were here, he could, he could just say everything that they have there. Um, they have a laser cutter, a laser uh, etcher kind of a thing. Um, and so those are really the only things that, um, that you really have to pay for. Um, because the 3D printing is about 10 cents a gram, um, and the, I think the, um, the laser cutter is uh, 10 cents a minute or something like that. So, um, but we've had some people do some amazing projects with that. It is a way to make your scholarship come alive to people. Um, and so talk to them if you're doing anything that needs just a really just interesting physical item um, or uh, anything like that, um, that would be really amazing to use that. If you're working with data um, and, and are, using, are, are creating data sets, 
Um, we would love to help you store those and archive those as well um, and work with those. Uh, we do have some um, digital librarians here, so if you need to do an online project as well, something that takes data and, um, and, and kind of um, puts it out to the public in a different format, we've done that as well. So that's a really cool kind of thing. Um, I'm actually thinking about urban planning and, and urban things, urban studies, because one recent thing that we did here at the library was to help map all of the parks in Omaha. We did that as an as a interesting kind of project, yeah. Um, so it was a Mozilla code camp kind of a thing, so it's kind of cool. Um, and then archives and special collections also so you're going to work with us kind of throughout your whole thing because um, Archives and Special Collections is the place then you put your thesis or your dissertation after you're all done. So we collect that and get that up online. Make sure that that's discoverable by lots and lots and lots of people um, once, you're, you know, once you've graduated and gone on um, to, to bigger and better and more amazing things. So um, I have talked at you for a good 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't always do this. Um, it is, um, but I really wanted to give you everything, you know, that, that, that introduction right away um, so you can just get, you know, get your feet on the ground and get going. Um, what other questions do you have for me that I have spoken about or not spoken about? I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of things, but. I did have a question. Sure. Um, I saw that you have a lot of these workshops, mm -hmm. but I think on the sheet it also says that some of them are offered online. Yes. So a lot of these you could find online. So what we're doing um, is that, um, and let me look at these. Many of these workshops will be um, live streamed. Uh, this one is, happens to not be live streamed, um, but most of, most of the rest of them will be. Um, and I um, don't know how Grad Studies is going to go ahead and um, communicate that to you. I'm sure they'll be sending out emails um, and putting that information up online. Um, so that's one way. And the other way that we will um, do this is uh, I'll be recording too. I'll be recording everyone. Um, and um, we will have that up on our library YouTube um, as soon as possible afterwards. So within, I'm hoping, a couple of days afterwards. And let me make sure that I can get you to our YouTube. Yeah, it's right there. Um, should be right there. Connect. No, that's Flickr. No, we don't want Flickr. I'll make sure we have a connection to YouTube from our main page. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we will be. So those are some ways that you can get to it um, after, you know, kind of, it'll be within a week, I'm sure. So, yeah. And I think that, um, I know we didn't really get into finding stuff today, finding the things that you'll need for your research today. Um, but if you, um, if you come to the, the literature review, we'll definitely have, uh, have some kind of tips and tricks on going into our databases. Um, and then into, um, these are just, it looks like September. Uh, so going into October, uh, November, then we'll have, I'll be doing one that's basically the um, kind of advanced kind of tips and tricks. So um, it's moving away from the idea of doing a big project um, and, and the kind of conceptual thing and moving towards just, hey, here are the things that I, um, you know, that I tell grad students when they're sitting in my office. So that's, but that's uh, later in the semester. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll have that out. Uh, look for signs in the buildings. Um, and ask grad studies if you're if you need anything. If you're looking for a very specific workshop, if you have any good ideas about what we should be teaching um, or offering as a workshop, uh, let grad studies know, and we can um, we can build that into next semester or next uh, next fall. So, yeah. um, 
The other thing, uh, how many of you are teaching? Are you um, teaching assistants at all? Anybody? Okay. Um, we have, oh, you're teaching? Um, great. Um, so we also are available to graduate assistants. Um, if you're teaching a class, um, librarians can come in and, uh, and do kind of a session. It's not like this, but um, you know, for undergraduates and, and kind of help them through the research assigned in their classes as well. Um, so, and know that graduate, uh, graduate students can um, request that too. So you just have to be the instructor of record for your class um, and you're, you're able to, um, to request that. Yeah. All right, excellent. Um, I should grab a computer and get that booted up so you guys, if you want to, you can get your library accounts set up. Yes? yes. Is this good? Okay, all right. Let me grab a computer here. I'm actually going to take this off so I can. request that new password. Uh, put your NUID number in, if you have that. Uh, just realize that the people watching probably want to know all this. Sorry. So if you put your NUID number in, and that's that, how many numbers is that? Uh, nine? Too many. Too many? Nine digit? Yeah. Uh, and request new password. Um, what that'll do is that'll send, um, that'll send an email to your UNO email account. So you'll need to open up a new, um, a new tab and then go to your UNO email account. And you should have been sent an email saying something like library account password reset or something like that. You'll receive an email from us. And there will be a link in there. Are you in your email there? I already have an account. Oh, you already have an account. Fantastic. No problem. All right. That's good. And then it will ask you to... Um, Put in your, it will either say um, NUID, I think it says NUID now, um, and, and a password um, from that link. So you'll click on that link in your email. Um, and then, yep, and then it'll say um, put in your ID and then a password. And that password is something that you can make up, but um, I always say make it as easy as possible so you can remember it in addition to the other. 7,000 passwords that you need to remember. Sure. 
sure, absolutely. But uh, every time I have to be to be in the account to look at the files, the document. So if there's a specific like chapter mm -hmm. I want to like review or mm -hmm. few pages, is there any way that I can have electronic version for like a, for a while? Or? Uh huh. So what does it say when you want to start reading? Yep. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So if for example, if the chapter one. The only thing is, uh, this one is like, yeah, yeah, reading. and print. Yeah. Um, you know, normally they are able to sort of, can you, let's mm -hmm. go back to the main <coughs> page. She is um, asking about Safari um, textbook or um, yeah. Safari books online, mm -hmm. um, and it is a different kind of interface that I'm used to. So, um, mm -hmm. all right. So I'll, I'll do um, the, the other two accounts first, and then I'll come right back to you and tell you how to do this. Um, so you're into your library account. All is well. Good. Are you into your library account here? Yes. There you go. All right. Fantastic. Yay. All is well. Um, and then, so then the second thing and what we want to do is do that interlibrary loan. So different place. So now we've got to go back to the... Um, the main page of the library, and if there's a Chris Library logo here, you can, you can click on that. That'll bring you back. Click on that. Excellent. Then what you want to do is click on, exactly, right? Uh, click on the interlibrary loan. Yep, exactly. And then uh, I think it's first time users click here. So it's right in there. And then you have to fill out a tiny little form. And do you have, okay, fantastic. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and it is, so you have to scroll, keep on scrolling down. There is some more to it at the bottom. Um, so I don't exactly know if, if that's, I don't think it's required, um, but it's probably helpful. Um, yeah. So your net ID username is just the first part of your UNO email. You know, email, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that is actually going to be the way that you um, that you log in. They're going to ask for your net ID and your NU ID. So it's pretty easy. And then for you, all you need to do is submit the information. You might already have one. Oh. So I need to look, uh, you can try and or? so try and uh, log in into the library loan and document delivery. Mm. So try and that would be um, email. yeah, and then password. I mm. think it would be your um, same as your number. The the and the uh. you know. Yeah, you already have an account. Fantastic. Okay. So, yeah, and so this is what your account looks like, uh, where you can see this is where you'll go to pick up your um, documents when they deliver them to you, um, where you can view the status of your outstanding requests um, and um, kind of use all of those tools that are associated with um, with that. So this is where all of your, if you've requested a document to be delivered to you, scanned, um, this is where it's going to be as well. So, so the net ID is the name and the number. I yes, that is absolutely right. So, all right. 
So those are the two main things that, um, that you really need to, to use the library, you know, to get you really started. So I made you all sit through the entire thing and then gave you like the most important piece at the end. How do you like that? Yeah, <laughs> very proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> so um, we're, we'll work on that, that ebook. Um, if both of you, um, I mean, you're welcome to kind of hang out and take a look around. Um, I'll be here for a little bit, a little while longer. Um, we're going to close up the room probably in another 10 minutes or so. But, um, but yeah, um, we'll be here. And I hope to see you both, all, you too. Uh, I hope to see you all around the library. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>